Uh, I'm going to go Patriots Jets under 40 and a half divisional unders this season. I think are 40 and 15, something ridiculous. Um, and yeah, I think that this is too high at, at 40 and a half. We always like divisional unders regardless of this time of year, but this year in this lower scoring environment with these two offenses, like there's all of the controversy around Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi. Bailey Zappi's my guy. I think he's going to be good. He got to play two of the best, the worst defenses in the league. He's still got some work to do. Mac Jones has been lost. I mean, Bailey Zappi's been much better than this year. He still might have some rust coming back. He didn't get the, and the Jets defense has been very good. And have we forgotten that like Zappi or Jones are working with a very limited wide receiver room? Like this isn't a great offense that the Patriots have. The other side, the Jets offense is lost, lost. This is uh, a horrifying offense that now doesn't have another an offensive lineman got hurt. And now you don't have Brees Hall, like your only promising player, because who cares? You have a receiver because you have a quarterback who cannot get you the ball. Zach Wilson has now dropped to 35th out of 36 qualified quarterbacks in EPA per plus CPOE. That's completion percentage over expectation composite. Only him and Baker Mayfield are negative in that statistic on the year. He had a 29% success rate. These are poverty success rates for a quarterback in the NFL. 32% the past two weeks. He's awful. Horrendous. I, he's going to be seeing ghosts. Uh, Patriots have won 12 straight in the series, by the way. And for what it's worth, uh, Bill Belichick is 39-7-1 against the spread. 84.1% after a loss as a dog or favorite of under seven points. 39-7-1. Against the spread after a loss as a dog or favorite under seven points. How about on the road in that situation? Because I bet them twice on the road in that situation this year, and they've covered them both. 26-3-1. and 90%. Covering by 10 points per game. <laughs> Insanity. And it hasn't all been with Brady. It's been with Castle. It's been twice this year. Um, so I think the Patriots get it done here. But it's going to be low score. It's going to be ugly. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if the Jets pull another – if the Jets pull out another luck box, whatever, they are going to get boat raced by the Buffalo next week because Zach Wilson is incapable of keeping up with a competent offense. And the Patriots aren't a competent offense right now. And the Jets haven't faced a competent offense besides the Ra the Ravens and the Bengals who blew them out. Um, they faced nothing but backup quarterbacks the entire year. And you could argue that they're face they'll face a backup quarterback no matter who plays for the Patriots this week. So, yeah, this will be ugly, hard fought. Patriots defense bounces back here. Low scoring, low, low scoring. You just got to hope for no uh, fluke defensive and special teams touchdowns. Give me the under. Yeah, I, I mean, Jesus, I go, we go head to head last week. I, I end up uh, coming out on the right side and then you steal two of the plays that I wanted for the show. Cause I, I definitely wanted this under uh, as well. I mean, Brees Hall is just a massive loss. He's averaging 5.8 yards per carry and a 51% success rate. Michael Carter, 3.4 yards per carry, 45% success rate. What does that mean? You're going to be in a ton of third and longs. And Zach Wilson, uh, first of all, they're, they're averaging 7.6 yards to go on third down with Wilson, which would rank uh, like tied for second longest uh, over the full year. Their third down conversion rate is bottom five. When he's pressured, his passer rating is 12.7. The Patriots are a top 12 team and pressure and Wilson is averaging only 1.7 yards per attempt under pressure so like people would think like okay well look what Chicago did well that's a different offense like under pressure Justin Fields will take a lot of sacks but he also averages 8.1 yards per pass attempt when he actually gets a pass off under pressure and he scrambles about 28 percent of the time Wilson scrambles seven percent of the time so like Fields Justin Chicago, Fields is also a lot faster than yeah, Zach Wilson it's just a, it's just a much more dangerous like high variance offense uh in you know those chicago bears even when you're you know kind of playing it right things can still break down whereas this jets team uh you know yeah it, it's, it's it's not gonna happen so yeah i'll be on this one uh this is this is actually my favorite uh total of the week too so i am actually going to uh ask your help here because there's a couple of totals that i'm thinking about going with and i want to hear your opinion on them so uh, the first one is Giants Seattle uh, under 44 and a half. Uh, basically, the thinking there, uh, you could get some rain. Um, the Giants have not allowed more than 23 points all year, and Seattle has no Metcalf. Uh, and then I'm also thinking, uh, is Metcalf Houston, definitely out though? How is he might might play? I keep hearing. I, I would. I mean, he had a 
what was it? A um, what was it? It was like a uh, some type of knee injury. I I would I, they were talking about like yeah, caught it off. But now then they were saying he might. Pete Carroll was saying today in the press that he might play. He's not going to practice, but he might play. Maybe it's just a ploy, but um, yeah, he didn't have a torn ACL, which is what many thought. So he's definitely not out for the year, which is big. Uh, for that game, I guess we'll, we can cover that game right now. I'll say no on that one. Well, maybe, but tentatively no, because the Giants, the floodgates are about – like the Giants have been good. They're top 10 DVOA on offense. But, yeah, I mean, now they lost another offensive lineman. They lose to tight end Ballinger. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and the Seahawks – defense has been the last two weeks the weeks one through five they're 31st dvoa last two weeks number one number one in the nfl against the chargers and I, the cardinals i was and, talking about that sh- that last week remember i was saying you know yeah. like, this is the time of year when like you have to kind of watch you can't just look at full season metrics like you have to kind of look at the like the schematic changes and things that and, and like i think seattle and, just getting that like more coverage guys on the field playing more of like a well it, yeah it, but it also they have uh i mean Everyone talks about Sauce Gardner. You want to talk about Ooh. the, I think the the 12th and the 15th corners, Kobe Bryant and the, the slot, but Tyreek Woolen has been mm-hmm. a shutdown corner for the Seahawks, especially of late. Just Justin Herbert wouldn't even throw at him. Um, and he's been one of the best corners in the NFL. He's like re- built with the same kind of, you know, Pete Carroll's always liked these long rangy cornerbacks. Kind of is, has like Richard Sherman vibes and the way that he's built and these long, long arms and, so he might be a player. So their secondary is playing a lot better. But the Giants' floodgates are about to break on defense. Like, I, their defense is really bad. And, like, I think they're – like, last week they gave up seven yards per play to the Jags, who scored only seven point, 17 points. Um, they're getting very fortunate. Um, so, I don't know, tentative on that one. I actually kind of like the Seahawks in this game. But maybe I'll just play them first half because the Giants – won their sixth straight game coming back by one possession in the fourth quarter. So I don't know, but uh, the line's probably about right. If you got to blow three, uh, that was probably okay, the so play. The, What's the other one? So there are a couple others. The, the, the first one was uh, the Denver Jaguar London game, uh, just because Denver, I, I, you know, I think the, the pressure that they're going to be able to get is going to be a lot of trouble for, for Trevor Lawrence. And then I still don't, I'm not buying Denver's offense. And then the other one was the Houston Tennessee game. The only thing I'm concerned with is Houston is dead last in, in run defense DVOA. But like you, you keep mentioning, Tennessee really they don't they they're good in the red zone, but, but that's going to regress. But they barely get to the red zone. Like they can they can go a whole game without scoring uh, on offense, like they did last week. So um, those are the other two I was thinking about. Well, yeah, yeah, Malik Willis might start. Um, I don't know. I would assume Tannehill goes, but their schedule is brutal coming up. Like you have the Chiefs next week. So maybe it's like an ankle sprain. He's out of his boot, but um, we'll see. He Malik Wills would just introduce a lot more variance, but I, I think their offense would go in the tank. Like Tannehill has been executing some good throws on play action. They have the worst receiving room I've ever seen in my life. Like they're starting <laughs> like Robert Woods is the star of the show. And then it's like Akina. And then they just put who else? They just put someone Mason else on Kingsley. IR. Uh, yeah, they Mason just put Kyle Kinsey Phillips is starting. Yeah. And Mason Kinsey is starting. Like their wide receiver room is a joke. Um, they just scored their first points in the fourth quarter on a field goal last week. Um, I don't mind them. Broncos, Jags, I, for whatever reason, games go over in London. There's Russell Wilson uncertainty. I think Russell Wilson is proven now that he will be an upgrade if he's healthy over uh, Brett Rippon, who was bad last week. He actually was lower in EPA per play. The, the two worst quarterbacks in the league last week, EPA per play, were Zach Wilson and Brett Rippon. Um, so I think tight, Titans, I think Texans, Texans division, yeah. that feels more like you. And then if Malik Wills goes, I think it's worse for the offense um, because I, it's just that that offense now is all about execution and timing. Like it's not like you have anyone who's going to help him make plays on the outside and he hasn't gotten a lot of reps um, and the, the receivers aren't good. Like Tannehill has been really good this year, given what he's got. Um, so I think that if Tannehill doesn't play, I think it helps the under too. And I, I don't mind the under anyway. And it's divisional under. Uh, it indoors, I, but yeah. Well, so mm. yeah, I mean, I think Titans Texans is more your vibe. I mean, or I mean, I could also go Commanders Colts under, but I hate going like multiple. Um, well, the other, the other thing with this Titans tight Texans under though is like Davis Mills at home. He has sixteen touchdowns, three interceptions, seven point seven yards per attempt. 250 yards per game, 70% completion percentage in nine home games. 
10 road games, seven touchdowns, 12 picks, five and 5.8 yards per attempt, 180 yards per game, 62% completion percentage. He's a completely different quarterback at home, but it's like Nico Collins. He's, did he get traded yet? I don't know. I assume he's going to get traded tomorrow. Uh, and then you have, he's, uh, he might be out anyway. He's hurt. no, I meant not Nico Collins. Uh, Brandon Cooks. yeah, Brandon Cooks might get traded. Nico Collins is hurt. So like they're receiving core against the, the Titans. Pasty is horrendous by the way. Um, and the Titans are running really good, like 80% red zone yeah. touchdown percentage. That's going to regress They're Yeah. So like, um, if you remove turnovers, the Titans are the worst pass defense in the NFL. Um, if you don't have Matt Ryan, the pumpkin, just throwing them the ball. Um, mm. but yeah, the tech, the go. Texans, like if you don't have Collins and they just signed someone off the practice or from the, Tyron the Johnson. They, no, practice. they released Tyler Johnson and signed Tyron Johnson. <laughs> like, yeah, there's <laughs> like literally, uh, seriously. I don't even know who the third leading receiver on the Chris Moore Texans is. It's Chris Moore. Chris Moore. Yeah. The, the former Raven. Guess. Former Raven. Yeah, I know Chris Moore. I, I wouldn't have guessed him. I thought it was, I thought it would have been like, uh, the tight ends are Oh yeah, Burkhead. I mean he might be actually. I, I mean the, the their number three receiver is Chris Moore. I, yeah, I mean, Burkhead may have more catches. Yes. Yeah, I I would go Titans Texans. That seems like you, but I'll like make the kind of call. Uh, I will go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go Titans Texans. 